Hello all my art loving friends. In this video we will be making this adorable little DIY palette and doing about 20 DIY mixes with the Schmincke Horridam Super Granulation Volcano Red and Volcano Yellow. Well, I am nothing if not curious and playing with these in my last video made me very curious about the other Schmincke paints that I have. And I think I will be brave and put these into some half pans. All right, this is the wonderful palette that was sent to me by a subscriber. Very sweet to do that. Anyway, most of these are Daniel Smith paints. Yes, I had a bit of an accident with them. I explained that in one of the videos previously, the palette tour video actually. However, in here, I know that she included several Schmincke paints, so I wanna pull those out. Looks like we have Potter's Pink, Quin Gold Hue, Turner's Yellow, Cobalt Violet Hue, that'll be fun, it's my nemesis. <laughs> French Ultramarine, Pyroline Green, and I think that's it, unless I've missed some. So I will try and find these in this mess that I have left. You can see that I did work on this a little bit and kind of put things back in pans. I put these ones upright here so that I would no, I need to double check their hue before I actually put them in the pans that I think they are. So <laughs> I have several of those that I wasn't sure on. But anyway, we'll pull those out and make up this separate Schmincke palette. And then I do want to put these two particular ones in my Prodigal Sons Super Granulating palette that I've made. So if you missed that video, I'll link that here. I also wanna do some DIY mixes with these still. So I did actually put that on my list of a bazillion things I want to do with watercolor. So yeah, subscribe because uh, you'll never run out of fun watercolor stuff with me here. <laughs> okay, that hardly took any time at all, but I remembered after the fact she said, she had filled these slightly less full because she only had smaller tubes of them and so generous of her to give me them at all because of that. But this one was falling out and I did the Drop of Gum Arabic like you guys suggested. I did finally get this open if you were wondering from the last video. <laughs> and it's only been half an hour maybe and it's, it's in there solid now. So that is a great tip. I do have four half pans out. 15 mil tubes, so I am going to go ahead and squeeze some into both of these. That should still leave me plenty for my DIY mixes that I wanna do. I am so looking forward to that, I can't even tell you how much I'm looking forward to that. My only concern is, do I have the other colors in tubes that I would need to even make the DIY mixes? So we will explore that. This yellow, every time I open it, is crazy scary. I'm gonna get ready. <laughs> Here goes. Well, see, now it's like welded shut with its own paint. Oh no, I may or may not have used my teeth. See, it just spews out, it's so bad. Feels like nothing has been taken out of the tube. 15 mils is a lot. I feel so fortunate to have these other six colors in Schmincke paints. <laughs> I, I'm just totally thrilled about that. Oh, I should have labeled those before I filled them with paint. Dang it all. Maybe I will actually label these before I fill them with paint. Did on that one, super granulating. Got kind of messy though, it's hard to write that small. I'll have to label these either be brave and label them while they're wet or wait a day for them to dry out. Cause that sample I did in the little White Nights palette sure dried out quickly. Ah, now I can't pick them up. <laughs> Try not to get on the Sharpie so that I don't smear it till it's fully dry. This paint is a lot thicker than the yellow one. That's probably why it doesn't come spewing out of the container here, the tube. All right, I feel way better now that I have filled these half pans and there's still a lot of paint left in the tubes. I don't feel quite so panicked about it. So what is my plan, you might ask? Well, yeah, I've got lots of plans. These are just empty tins that we have laying around the house. Actually, they're in the toolbox bin because we keep them to put in miscellaneous nuts, bolts, and screws. And these were empty except for this one. I may have dumped four screws out of this one because I liked it and I wanted it to be in the run for this. One of these is gonna be a mini Schmincke palette. How fun is that? However, the tops are tin. So whatever color they end up being in the tin is the color you get. I am not okay with that. I knew I had epoxy white paint somewhere because I owned a white diesel that the, if you know anything about Chevys, <laughs> They lose their paint really easily. So the whole roof of my truck was kind of getting rusty and I bought a couple of these and told my youngest son 
go paint my roof. He never did, but I had these still and he got a hold of them and I don't even know where they ended up. So I spent a lot of time looking for that. But hey, I found some things that I was missing like expired supplements. That's not very useful. But in that white truck I was telling you about, I knew when I sold it, before I sold it, I pulled out a brand new pack of ratchet straps. I was so excited because ratchet straps are so useful and then I couldn't find them. For a year and like four months it's been now since I sold that truck, I could not find those ratchet straps. In looking for this appliance epoxy, I found those ratchet straps. That alone made the whole search worthwhile. Point is, we're gonna use the appliance epoxy because it makes this shiny white appliance feeling on the inside of these so we can use the mixing space and have it be a white background. The question is, I finally found this out in the garage. That's scary right now. I did not realize my son moved to Moab and left the garage <laughs> a complete and total disaster. Oh dear, yeah, he's gonna have to come home and take care of that. Anyway, our garage is not heated. So this has been freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing. <laughs> I don't even know how long. So uh, we'll see, it's liquid in there even though it's still probably close to freezing outside right now. I don't know, I need to go look what the temperature is, probably in the 40s. We'll see if it even works and you know, no big deal if it doesn't, we have some extras. However, I'm not gonna choose this one because this has that indent for the Altoids name. And without filling that in with watercolor ground or something like that, which I probably will do in the future, then I'm, not, I'm just not gonna worry about that today. So one of these two it is. Anyway, these two are gonna go in my Prodigal Sun Super Green Leading Palette. So I'll put the yellow by the yellows and the red over here because the new red I'm getting from Prodigal Suns will go over here and it'll be Prodigal Suns and two Schmincke Super Granulating Paint Palettes. It's gonna be so cool, I cannot wait. Enough talking, let's do. It was 40 degrees outside, but I still sprayed the tin outside. This is not that tin, it is still upstairs drying. Once I sprayed it, I brought it inside to smell up my house while it dried because I didn't think it drying out in 40 degree temperatures would be very good for it. Regardless, that tin is the same size as this tin, so I've been playing with some layouts and I can get 12 half pans in here quite nicely. I like the idea of this tiny little palette though. It's kinda cute. I've always wanted to do one in one of these tins even though it's not very much mixing space. It's just always kind of appealed to me. I guess I better go do my research on those DIY mixes, huh? It occurred to me that you guys might actually want to know something here. So these were poured with you guys not that long ago. It has been 45 minutes at the most, but check this out. If I push on it, it already has a shell over the top. Ooh, I'm pushing actually pretty hard. So these are going to dry out really quickly. I don't know if you can see the divot I just put in that, but I've pushed really hard and it's not coming off on my finger. 45 minutes. Let's try the yellow. The yellow is way thinner, so I'm curious. It looks like it has a film over it already. Oh, I'm nervous. Here we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Pushed really hard. You see the divot I made? Interesting. So I bet these would benefit greatly from pouring in layers. I did not pour in layers. I just, I just took the lazy way and poured them all at once. But yeah, pour these in layers and you'd probably benefit greatly. Here it is after two coats of paint. Looks pretty shiny. <laughs> It's still very stinky though. It isn't sticky, so we're probably okay using it, but it's getting pretty late in the day. It's after five o'clock p.m. and I think I will let it sit overnight and we will continue on this journey tomorrow. I did start a notebook full of mixing notes over here, things I might wanna try. I have to go look at my pigments, see what I have. So I grabbed my very small tin of two paints, which ends up when you pour it out being a lot of two paints, <laughs> went through them pigment by pigment, name by name, and well, mostly pigment by pigment because I was looking for very specific pigments and you'll see what I found in the very end here. I did make a list of <laughs> the paints I can actually create with tubes. I'll show that to you in a minute. Plus mixes we can just make with half pans, which would be just recipe cards basically. But anyway, I don't have my studio lights on, doesn't matter. I wanna see if the magnet thing will work in this. I don't know that this is a strong enough magnet, it's just from a phone book. Anyway, I'm gonna cut one off, stick it to the bottom of a pan with the double-sided tape I always use, and then put the pan in there and see if it actually keeps it from sliding around or if this is just not a strong enough magnet. I will let you know in a minute. I have the first magnet attached. I didn't get it on there very straight, but that's okay. So let's see what happens. 
you know, this is through the two layers of paint and everything, so it's in there. Hmm. Well, that holds way better than I expected. I was pretty certain this was going to, like, slide around and all of that. Let's see. Wow. Okay, that's what we're doing on all of them. All right, I think I have everything out here that I need to do all of this. In reality, guys, I'm actually finding this quite confusing. <laughs> you guys are probably like, it's not that hard, but it feels very confusing to me. So I'm hoping that I will get this. I have the White Knights palette out here because it has a lot of the Volcano Yellow left in it. So I'll just use this for mixing space for that. The little palette I created, I did create a swatch sheet that I don't know what order I want to put them in yet, but okay, the list. The top ones are ones that I can make out of tubes that I have. And I didn't have very many. I'll go through that in a minute. Anyway, the ones down here are ones that I can make with pans so it's not something I can pour into a pan but if I want to keep the recipe card for that I can certainly make those colors with pans I have and I have some of those pans out over here. The ones here on the list with tubes I can actually make and pour into tubes. The ones with X's are ones that I just don't really like the colors. Besides the volcano orange I'll have the red and yellow in the palette anyway so I can just make that anytime I want. That has the X. I do want to do the PB15 colon 3 mixtures, and that is going to be the Thalo Blue Green Shade. I have three tubes of the Thalo Blue Green Shade, and only Core calls it that. Mission Gold calls it Cerulean Blue, and Sennelier calls it Thalo Cyanide Blue. And then I want to do the Shire Green for sure because I love greens, and that's the PY159 with the PG18, which is Viridian, and I do have these three Viridians Blick, Daniel Smith, and Core. I did pour some of the Blick version into this pan so I want to see how easily or difficult it re-wets. Because it is such a large tube, I would rather use that in this DIY mixture than one of these smaller tubes, although Viridian's not a color I use very much, you can tell, so it really probably doesn't matter. Desert Yellow is the PY159 with a Burnt Sienna, and I do have this tube of Sennelier Burnt Sienna. And then mixing the Volcano Red with any other brands, PR108, was highly recommended by Kimberly Crick because it just creates a really nice, more easy to re-wet, still highly granulating red. And the only PR 108 I have in a tube is the Core Cadmium Red Medium. Not on the list is this one. This is the PB153, which is the Thalo Blue, PBK7, it's just a black, and a PB19, a violet color. And I thought it would be really fun to just mix this with some of the Volcano Red because I want to try that. <laughs> I don't know that I'm going to pour it into a pan, but I do want to see what it looks like. So let's do this first one, PY159 with PV153. I should have put water on this yellow a bit ago, but let's grab some of this. Oh, that's extremely brilliant. That's kind of neat. I don't know exactly what color I'll want at the end with this. I'm just going to... Let this spread out and then add some more of the Volcano Yellow to it. She recommended, I believe, more like 50-50 mixtures, at least with the PR-108 and the PB-153. Uh, she recommended a 50-50 mixture. Yeah, so I need to just keep a bunch of water on that. Let's go get some of this. Yeah, so my versions of these aren't going to be exact, but that's okay. So now she recommended the PR-108 with the PV-153. I'm in the part of the Edger sketchbook here where it kind of bows up in the middle and I tried to readjust how I had the binding down there, but anyway, it's kind of a tricky bend and I'm not having a whole lot of luck with that binding. Let's see what it looks like as is so far. Get a lot more water. Not really seeing any of that volcano red in there. A little, I guess, a little bit. Let's grab some more out of the tube. That's better. Let's see how that ends up separating. So this is the one she recommended in a 50-50 mixture. And I probably needed way more water on my page for that one, but that's okay. Just experimenting here. So we did those two. Shire Green is gonna be the PY159 and the PG18. Okay, we love greens, I love greens. So this is, definitely needs more water. I think I'm gonna try and pull this Thalo blue a little farther away. I don't want it to influence my mixture over there. PG18. Let's see how this one re-wets first before we follow that little rabbit hole. 
It's actually not too bad for a Viridian. So we'll try that. I guess I could have just mixed with it out of the pan, right? I don't know what I was thinking there. Wasn't thinking. <laughs> All right, we got a good mixture going on. Let's add some water this time. That's your papers. Quite rough, absorbs all the water very quickly. I think we got a pretty good mixture going on. Wow, I thought <laughs> we're talking uh, Viridian, which is not high pigment load paint with a volcano yellow, which is not a very high pigment load paint. <laughs> Looks like it could be pretty, could be. Grab some more Viridian, just kind of dot it in and see what happens there. So the next would be the desert yellow. Now that's one I put an X by because I wasn't really interested in that color all that much. I think we're gonna actually have to put out a little bit more yellow in this palette. We're getting too much interference from the Iridian and the Thalo on each side. So that's a mixture with PBR7. Let's get some water on the subject. Okay, mix those. This does not look that interesting to me. I think you could use a lot of this yellow like Kimberly said in her video. Oh, that's actually not a horrible mixture. I don't mind that so much. Didn't look very interesting to me others. So Volcano Red with the other brand of PR108. I think I'll just go ahead and make a pan of that because I know I want to. And give it the old mixy mix. This is going to be fun to see what happens. See if it dries out as fast as the Volcano Red and Volcano Yellow or not. Yeah, this point in the sketchbook is really awkward. I don't know if you guys noticed in that last video of mine I was like holding it with my arm up here and stuff. That's why, because this is a weird bend. I've really got to figure that out. Okay, because this is core paint. <laughs> We're going to see that massive spread, which is kind of cool. Dilute this one even further here. So those are the only ones that I could pour myself, with the exception I didn't do Volcano Orange because that just seemed boring. But I do have all these others in the brands. So PBK11 is Roman Schmal's Aquarius Black. This Volcano Red, by the way, it's already starting to dry out over there. So that was kind of cool. We've never actually done a dispersion test with these. And a little bit of the black. What are we making? Volcano Brown. So as far as I know, this is the only PBK11 I have is this Roman Schmal version. All right, that's very pretty. The next one, Shire Blue, PY159, PG26. Did I have a PG26 somewhere? I don't think I have a PG26. Yes, should be the Cobalt Green Deep of Roman Schmal, but I don't have Cobalt Green Deep in Roman Schmal. What's this pigment? Oh, that's a PG19. There's a Cobalt Green Deep here, but it is not a PG26. You know what? Let's try it anyway. This is a super granulating color here. Nothing says we can't experiment, right? Shire Blue, PY159. Let me get some water. I think my squares are getting bigger and bigger. That's okay. PY159, gonna be a lot of that mixed with PB29. That's Ultramarine Blue. And I'll just take that over here from Roman Schmal. Get a little bit more. Ooh, pretty. And we'll do a little bit of the Cobalt Green Deep from Prodigal Sons. Let's add a little more Ultramarine. I actually don't remember what Shire Blue is supposed to look like, but that right there on the page sure is pretty. <laughs> I'm liking that. I'll show you these up closer when they are dry and all of that. Okay, Desert Gray. And of course we're out of PY159 in our palette again. I don't think that tube's gonna last very long. <laughs> Look, it's already pretty low. So just our yellow with this black. I really like that one. I actually could make a really pretty green with just the French ultramarine and the volcano yellow. I might do that. I might play with that on this paper and then see what I come up with. Okay, now the yellow. We're gonna call that enough. And the black. It's supposed to be a desert gray. Interesting. Desert Brown would be mixing the red, the yellow, and this. Okay, we should try that. So the yellow, red, getting some over here on this other palette. Okay, so that right there is supposed to be the Desert Orange, in case you were wondering. Now we're going to make it Desert Brown by adding some of this PBK11. Oop, that was a lot of PBK11. That's okay. 
Yeah, that was probably too much. Although I do see a lot of brown coming through. Actually, I think we'll just leave it. I think it's pretty. All right. I think that's all the mixes I can make. But let's try that yellow with the ultramarine because I have a couple of different tubes of ultramarine here that we could try. So I'm going to actually try one that I would pour and make a mixture out of here. Except I can't get it open again. There's the yellow. And there's the ultramarine deep. That wasn't very much ultramarine, as usual. It's very overpowering, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more yellow in here and kind of see what we get. I'm gonna get some black laid down here for an experiment here in a second. Let's go ahead and try the buff titanium with the PR122. In this case, this is Daniel Smith's Quinacridone Magenta PR122 and Daniel Smith's buff titanium. I do have my Roman Schmal buff titanium like right here, but we'll use Daniel Smith right now. Mix in right on the paper. Clean the brush, PR122, ooh, pretty. All right, I did way too much PR122. This powdery pink is not this bright, so let's add some more of the buff titanium. We'll start it like down here and bring it up into it maybe, or keep going. Yeah. A little bit more, why not? Well, that's neat. Let's add some water to this M. Graham. This is gouache, they're titanium white, and I poured it in here and it shrunk all up. I don't know, I've had some comments from Jen, I think that she's like, it just is not re-wetting, but this one looks like it's re-wetting okay. Granted, it's only, what, a week old when I poured that? Well, that's not bad, not bad at all. I don't know if it would continue to get harder and harder. She says hers doesn't re-wet at all, and it's basically trash, and it was M. Graham, so maybe it will get harder as time goes by. But that I'm pretty happy with. Okay, let's do that last I'm curious mixture. <laughs> this is going to be the Volcano Red with Coors Indigo. This Coors Indigo has some neat ingredients. It is PB153, PBK7, and PB19. I think I told you that in the beginning of the video. But PR108, we're going to mix that. Coors Indigo. Ooh, it's not going to take much. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think I even got too much and I... Barely tried to get any. Let's grab some more of the Volcano Red and drop in there. I only have it in a pan now over here, but it is what it is. That's how I'll be using it, right? Oh yeah, very neat. Let's see what it looks like. Dry paper, some indigo. Get some Volcano Red. Hmm. Kinda like that. Also had other things we could try. Ultramarine Red, oh, so like a purple. Cause I didn't have any PV19s. This is a PV15. We could try that with the yellow and get a gray, but that's boring. So let's do red. Daniel Smith's Lunar Violet. All these colors are thanks to Diane it's in the palette she sent me. Let's mix this with some of the red. Let's see what that ends up looking like. And the last one I wanted to try was the Lunar Black with that red. Put that there so we know what it is. <laughs> oh, actually, accidentally got a lot of red right then, but we'll let these dry, see what happens. They are all dry and oh, do I wish I had a PBK11 in a tube because <laughs> look at those. They're so pretty. Well, kind of pretty. The desert brown is pretty. The other one is just unique. And then I kind of got bored while I was waiting for these to dry and I mixed the PY159 with Schmincke's Paraline Green. And then I mixed the yellow and the red with Coors Indigo, and then I mixed Coors Indigo with just the yellow, the volcano yellow we're talking here, and then I dotted out all the colors I had in my Schmincke palette already, so I could kind of get an idea of what I might want to put in my three remaining pans, but look at this one. Oh, I so wish I had a granulating black, a PBK11 in a tube. I would definitely do one of these more black mixtures. So my decisions are, <laughs> I at first was going to do the yellow mixture with the burnt sienna, but then the Quinn gold here is pretty comparable enough and that didn't granulate out enough with the yellow. Maybe I just didn't put enough in there, but it's just not that spectacular. So I think I will let the Quinn gold stand for that one. So not doing that one. That one's already in a pan and you can see the mixture there Definitely does give you a little bit brighter, more deeper red, still granulating, still very pretty. So I'm glad that I put that in that little half pan over there. 
And then the Shire Green is so bright, but it's very pretty. It shows all the granulation. I just wish I had the PBK11. That's okay, that's okay. I don't have it. So out of these two, look how they send the water to the edges, or send the blue, the PB15, to the edges. It's very interesting on those. So I think I will do the mixture of that one. I don't know what I'm going to use it for entirely because it is so bright, but I want it. <laughs> I really want this one. Anyway, I want them all. I just want them all. But I think I will do the core indigo with the red because it gives me a muted pretty color and it's not bright like that one. So here's all of them in a nutshell if you want to pause and zoom in on anything. And then here I spend some time pouring those half pans, mixing them together with toothpicks, and then I use the toothpicks to kind of swatch some stuff on my Etcher sketchbook to see how they were coming out. And some of the pans were very dark. I wanted to add more PR108, so I ended up splitting them into more half pans. Ah! So I ended up with more half pans than I wanted, but oh well. I cannot help it. <laughs> I can't help myself. I have to do this whole page of mixes because these Prodigal Sons paints are so beautiful and so granulating and I need to mix the PR Red with most of them. <laughs> I just have to. And then the PY 159 I want to mix with a few of them too. So you can see I've labeled it so I can keep track and won't get confused and won't duplicate things. And then my DIY mixes because I ended up making them too strong with some colors and ended up splitting them into two. Got concerned about having two of these because I didn't really need two of these so I added the PR 108 in that one to see what kind of green we could make so anyway we've got to try these out and see because we only have room in this palette for four additional pans and you can see we have one, six but this one's these two should be the same but anyway we have to eliminate one of these or see if it'll squish in here but I have my doubts and I like this little palette I want to use it I don't want to make a different one <laughs> Okay, let's start swatching and oh dear, I'm so excited. Okay, here we go. All right, every single swatch on this page is labeled for you. So I'm going to leave it in this video sped up, but if you would like the slow version, the non-time-lapse version, the real-time version, I will leave that link for you in the description box below. There will not be a public release on my channel, but again, if you wanna see it, it's 20 minutes long approximately and you can watch that by clicking the link in the description box below. In the meantime, here's the sped up time-lapse version of all these beautiful, glorious, so pretty mixes with the Prodigal Sons and other paints. It doesn't last for very much longer, so no worries. Don't worry, you don't have to skip forward. You can watch these beautiful mixes <laughs> in person and see them all sped up here, and then I'll be back with the real-time talking here in just a moment. Which of the colors to choose? Definitely this one. Definitely the red of these two greens. So that one's definitely more of a, what do you call that? Like a turquoise green, teal green. Like when I was putting it down on the paper, I liked it better than our Shire green DIY, but now that they're drying, I like our Shire green. <laughs> So I think we're going to take that one. Then it's between these two. I want them both. Let's see if we can fit them both. So if, gooch it over, that over, aw, nope. The fifth one will not fit in there. Well, shoot. That's a bummer. Okay, now I have to choose between the two. I'm going to take this one on the end because I could make a water scene maybe and it would be, I guess, more interesting. They're all dry and look because of what core is like. <laughs> it's kind of interesting how it did that. Down here. Much more subtle granulation, a little brighter red. That sure is pretty. That smalt, that smalt's just crazy, isn't it? Oh, that's a cool mixture. That is beautiful. That's that Naples Yellow's Light of Prodigal Suns mixed with the Volcano Red. I'm liking it. Cool. This makes me happy that I put the Schmincke Volcano Red and Volcano Yellow into my Prodigal Suns palette. Look at that. Yes, please. Same with this one. Very interesting. 
interesting. I flip back to the page where we did these greens. So these were all with the Naples Yellow Light from Prodigal Sons and the Vivianites, both of the Vivianites from Prodigal Sons. So this is all Prodigal Sons colors. And here's the one with the Volcano Yellow from Schmika because it just makes it granulate more. But the colors are very similar. And then I don't know if I can show you this bend over here. <laughs> hang on, hang on, I'm working on it. There we go. I don't know. Kind of interesting. Okay, enough of that. Back to this. I think I figured out what order I want these in, and I have my little swatch sheet ready, a little paintbrush, but we need to see how this palette will do with pulling color out onto it, right? So let's do the Quinn Gold. Okay, so it beads up, but it definitely is working. <laughs> While we have that Quinn Gold on the brush, let's go ahead and just put it in here. <laughs> that was a pretty watery version of it, but that's okay, right? The Schmika colors I have now are the Quinn Gold you just saw, and then <laughs> I was trying to clean the palette up. Potter's Pink, Turner's Yellow. The next one is the Cobalt Violet Hue. <laughs> French Ultramarine, followed by the Volcano Red with Core Cadmium Red Medium, followed by the Perlene Green. Volcano Red with Sinelli APB 1315-3, sorry. Volcano Red, Volcano Yellow, DIY Shire Green, and the Volcano Red with the Core Indigo. There they are, da -da. Well, that was an absolute blast. Totally way too much fun. So now we have to do a painting with this little palette at some point in the future. Add to my ever-growing list. <laughs> we have these beautiful things to look at and enjoy and reference back to over and over Roman small palette, which is always awesome. Still have a little bit of these left, so I'll put these in with my other tubes, which is right here. And I have just enough room for them. I could probably fit one or two more tubes and that's it. So can't buy more paint. <laughs> okay, that's probably not gonna happen, but you know. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope this inspired you to get out your paint and try some mixes and try a painting with unique mixes. This was so fun. All right guys, I will see you in the next video, which is gonna be one of many more fun ones to come. Hit the like button down below if you haven't already. And if you have, I really appreciate that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. Bye for now. Little work. Ah. Almost fell off my chair. It is such a large tube. I would rather use that in this DIY. DI <laughs> green, a little bit of hair go with it. Oh, this one doesn't have the magnet on it. Dang it all. I put the magnet on the one I'm not keeping. Shoot. <laughs>